I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and today, as part of our equipment series, we're gonna do puppy equipment. Um, well, you know, because obviously I have puppies. So yeah, look out for the, in the following months for a few segments that are focusing primarily on puppy equipment. We are gonna give you all the ins and outs of what you might need before you have a litter, when your litter's first born, and probably up to about eight weeks of having a litter. Just different things that you may or may not have thought of, and the things that are gonna make your puppies flourish and your life just a little bit easier when you have the adorable little gremlins around. So stay tuned for that. Before we get started on our puppy series, I just wanted to mention a few things. First of all, I'm not a veterinarian, right? And I don't play one on the internet. I am not trying to give you medical advice, veterinarian advice, anything like that. What I am here doing is I am giving you things that have worked for me in the past, things that I have found useful that are maybe you haven't heard of before, maybe you have, but just giving you different ideas. Maybe it's two o'clock in the morning where you are and you're Googling what to do with you know my sick puppy or is my puppy warm enough or how do I swaddle it so that I can get an accurate weight on it. That is what we are here for, right? We are here for to give you a smattering. This by no means is an exhaustive list or an, an exhaustive example of any of these stages, but we want to give people that are reputable breeders a place to start, a place to look for, a place to find resources. If you want to have more detailed information, we would love for you to have that too. And we have a full, very detailed course with weights, diagrams, measurements, videos, um, written synopsis that you can purchase on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy that goes into everything we talk about in our YouTube series in much, much more detail. We are here to help you you to help puppies, to help the reputable breeder out there. And we just want to provide you with some information and maybe a little bit of comfort um, until things are going absolutely right or until you are ready to whelp your first litter or maybe whelp your 100th litter. Um, so I just wanted to give you that little disclaimer before we hop to it. Hi, let's talk about our puppies from about four weeks to eight weeks. So now they're actually becoming real dogs, right? They have individual personalities and it's really our job to just get them ready to be good citizens out there in the world. So a few things before we get into like really interacting with our puppies that have really, really helped me um, just be prepared at different times when I've had different litters are this. So first of all, I love white paper. White paper keeps my dogs um, much cleaner, especially when I have white puppies. Obviously it's in nice big, sheets covering my face and um, it's just really really easy paper to use. I get it from U-Haul so it's great it comes in a box obviously you have to pay money for it so maybe some people think that isn't so great because they actually do have to pay money for it which is perfectly fine. I like to use the white paper then I will use newsprint shredded up um, to you know help keep my puppies clean and I find that this works really really well. I really like getting that paper especially now it's harder to get newspaper right there's not as many newspapers out there not as pe many people are getting the news so to get enough newspaper can sometimes be a challenge. So at this point um, my puppies also might have a pee pad right sometimes I'll even put a pee pad on top of the paper if I'm really trying to target them where I want them to go to the bathroom in their well area. The, the puppy pads that I get, I try to make sure I get the unscented ones because I'm just wondering like what did they use to scent them. Um, and they, they're, I get the ones as big as possible. Obviously if you had toy breeds or something you might want to get the smaller ones but that's typically what I do. So around four weeks as long as my puppies are thriving I like to move them out of their whelping box or I like to take down the front wall of their whelping box and I treat their whelping box as their den. And if I'm not using the whelping box as a den I'm definitely definitely using that same vet bedding as their den. So my puppies are set up in an area that has a big um, area for them to sleep. And then on top of that, they have an area 
to go to the bathroom that has paper on it, paper and a pee pad, paper and shredded paper. And typically I can get them if they have a large area only using about one third to 25% of their area to actually potty in and the rest is nice and clean, which I really like it, you know, just makes my puppy so much easier to deal with and they naturally want to do this. So that's kind of how I'm caring for my puppies. My puppies are still in a really warm area. Um, I still, I want them to hear different noises now. So maybe I've, you know, moved them somewhere that they can hear different noises. And obviously I'm keeping them neat and clean. They also have a very heavy, heavy, low ceramic dish with a little bit of water in it. I never want to give my puppies enough water that they can drown in it, right? So they're getting like maybe um, a quarter to a half inch of water, depending on how big they are. And as they grow, I can adjust that amount. But basically if that puppy fell in that dish and could not get up, I do not want them to drown in that dish. Very, very, very important. All right. So the other things is maybe um, sometime in there, it's time for you to worm your puppies, talk to your veterinarian about worming them, dosage, etc. cetera. Um, but it, it, this is a time probably the puppies and the mother should be wormed sometime between that four to eight week period. Um, at this time, I am also still changing their toys around. So they're getting different toys um, kind of each and every day. Uh, and again, I just have a big basket. I switch them around. Um, closer to eight weeks, I like them to have a toy that they can tug on, that they can pull, etc. cetera. Um, I'm still trimming their nails. Typically still poodle puppies, standard poodles are still small enough. I can use a human toenail clipper on. And now I am introducing them to treats. So the the treats, um, well, this is actually toothpaste, but the treats could be NutriCal in a tube. It could be these greenies. I like them, the pill pockets, because they're super soft. So I can just squish them and like, you know, divide it into four and give the puppies a little bit of treat. Um, I have tarps, I have yoga mats. I have things set out in their play area that they can run around. I like to take them outside and let them like run over a tarp, um, go on the deck, go on the walkway, go on the gravel, go on the grass so that they're feeling all of these different textures in and around them. Um, I like them to be able to interact with me individually. Um, obviously if my puppy gets really, really scared, like overly scared of something, I like back off on that activity and kind of wait a couple days to re introduce that activity. My poodle puppies are getting shaved and groomed. So my poodle puppies are on the table one at a time and only for 30 seconds each is fine. I mean, a little bit longer the day they get their faces shaved, but 30 seconds to a minute, just individually on a grooming table. I'm starting to teach them what I expect of them, what I want of them. My puppies also have an amazing PlayStation. Um, so their PlayStation is something that I have set up. It is um, PVC, has toys hanging from it, um, and they really, really like that. They like to look up, and I like to rotate those toys on their PlayStation as well. So this is my puppy PlayStation. So it's some um, PVC pipe connectors, and really we just have different um, toys connected to it. The idea is, is that you want your puppies to see different things. You want them to be looking up and just like interacting with different toys. So like this one lights up, um, some squeak, this one kind of squeaks, but has different textures. Um, you know, they can just do different things. And you might think that these uh, zip ties, but they're reusable. So that's how we get them on and off to like switch out the toys. Um, and super easy to clean and, and disinfect. The puppies really like it. Obviously you can put it in your whelping room um, or if they're outside, you can put it outside. Wherever your puppies go, it can go with you. So yeah, my puppies really, really love having one of these and we call it the puppy PlayStation. So my puppies get introduced to a lot of different things. Now my puppies around five weeks are typically, unless they're not thriving, um, weaned from their mother. What does that look like? So once they start eating, I take their kibble and I grind it in a blender. I mix that with goat's milk and I start giving that to them until they're really, really eating that with a lot of um, robustness. Then I switch to the same kibble soaked in water so it's nice and soft with some goat's milk, maybe a little bit of raw, maybe a little bit of canned, whatever, you know, is you think is the right thing for your puppies. They 
and the mother is in with them, um, typically not overnight, right? So she, I might feed them breakfast in the morning and then let them nurse off her to kind of help her milk dry up at the same time I'm weaning those puppies. Right now, my puppies are fully weaned. They're not eating off their mother, but she still gets playtime with them, right? This is a really, really important enrichment period. Um, so I'll walk the mom around my yard and the puppies chase her. Sometimes she'll lay down and let them nurse even though she doesn't even have any milk to nurse them, but it's still a really important stage for the puppies to see their mom and be able to be around them. At this point, my older dog, who is very, very tolerant of puppies, it's good for them to also meet another dog for very short periods of time at this, at this stage in their life. Um, and just really introducing those puppies to individual attention, to lots of different noises, textures, um, being individual. They can be introduced to a crate at this time. So I might have a crate in their whelping area with the door off of it so they can go in and out and they're used to a crate. Obviously, I think a crate is just a great tool for every single dog in the world. Um, so that's how I introduce my puppies to them. As well, at this point, I'm making arrangements with my veterinarian for them to get microchip, for them to get their first vaccinations. Um, we do have a whole vaccine protocol on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, but again, talk to your veterinarian, talk to your breeder, know your breed, know what you want out of your vaccination schedule for your puppies. That is really important. It is very, very individual. The vaccines that your puppy may or may not require could differ just on the, the area of the world that you live in, right? So some puppies might need different vaccinations than others. So really the puppies to me are the absolute most work in their life between four weeks of age and eight weeks of age. That's because I am responsible for them. I am responsible for how they are going to perceive the world. So for me, for them to have positive experiences and also having different experiences is really important for them to hear a dishwasher. I might put you know, a movie on a laptop in the room that, that they are in so they can hear maybe a jet engine going, maybe a train whistle, like different sights and sounds. I'm still very, very careful to keep my puppies. They don't go out in public. Um, anybody that comes into my life and wants to see my puppies, um, takes off their shoes, washes their hands. And I know that they are in a place where if they own a pet, their pets are fully vaccinated and that I can trust that that can happen. Like that is my job, right? Um, this is when our puppies' immune systems can be kind of at their lowest is from about six weeks until even you know three weeks after they are vaccinated because they're losing the immunity they've gotten from their mother and they haven't yet gained it from being vaccinated. So again, something to talk to your veterinarian about. So uh, to wrap it up, the you know four to eight weeks is a lot of work for you you're responsible for bringing a lot of things to your puppies especially if you have a breed that is grooming heavy you're grooming them and making sure that you are introducing that in a positive way you're also taking care of the mother mentally and physically you don't want to make sure that she gets upset from being away from her puppies but sees them the right amount of time you want to be introducing your puppies to new things in a happy way right running over a tarp seeing a yoga mat maybe having a cardboard box with treats underneath it, that they kind of have to search out those things. Anything that keeps them mentally stimulated is really, really good for them. So I hope that you have really enjoyed this series on our puppy equipment, and I hope that you are really, really enjoying your puppies. Please check out Leading Edge Dog Show Academy if you want to know anything more in any more depth. I hope this helped. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.